Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. In this video I will be looking at rearranging equations as a skill not necessarily specific to the study of physics. However we will be using this skill very often in this class. Uh, but the great thing is this is a, a universal skill. This applies uh, in your math classes and your other science classes. This will apply in any other kind of discipline where you have to think mathematically. Economics, for example, you'll end up using this skill from time to time. Why bother looking at this? Why try to learn this skill? Well, you're going to have to be a problem solver. Uh, that is actually one of the things that uh, physicists really are, are known for. They're known for being excellent problem solvers of almost any kind. Uh, people with physics degrees can get employment in almost any field because they're so good at trying to figure things out. Uh, solving problems where, where maybe they don't know where to start. In fact, it's not just you know reading a situation out of a problem in a textbook and then being able to solve it. We do a lot of that. But you have to be able to go beyond that and, and, and maybe without quite knowing what to, what to do at first, uh, you have to be able to uh, start to produce, start to figure something out and show results. But when you are problem solving uh, as a general uh, strategy, what you're going to do is re end up rearranging equations a lot. We'll get to this in a second. Equations are definitely easier to handle before you insert any numbers into it. You're, believe it or not, you already do rearranging, but so many students want to rearrange things uh, after you've put the numbers into the equation. And I think that's a big mistake. The reason is, it actually increases the number of mathematical errors students make. If you rearrange the equation before you put any numbers in there, you will make fewer mistakes. You will get the right answer more often. And that's so positive. So, uh, rules. All right, I, maybe they shouldn't be called rules to follow. It, it's not that strict. Uh, maybe technique or procedures. I don't know. I just threw a word on the paper. Uh, number one, work your way from the outside in. Start from the farthest from your goal. Uh, you'll see what that means when we get to the example. Number two, to move or cancel something on one side of the equation, perform the opposite operation with it on both sides of the equation. You'll see us do that as well. And number three, what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. Uh, otherwise, it's no longer equal and you've really messed things up. Um, you're going to see all three of these working in this example. So, uh, we have this initial equation. Uh, final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. And you're going to see things like solve for something or isolate something. I'll, and I'll say those, I'll say, oh, why don't you just isolate uh, initial velocity or why don't you solve for acceleration and that's actually what we're going to do here we're going to solve for acceleration and basically means we're going to isolate it on one side of the equal sign or you can think of it as just rearranging the equation in order to get this all by itself so following these three steps the or rules uh, we're going to start working away from the outside and start farthest from your goal so here's our goal and the farthest on this side of the equation from our goal. The farthest place is over here. We're going to start here. That's furthest away. And so we have to undo this. Remember that this is getting added to the thing we want. So we have to undo that. Well, to move or cancel something on one side, perform the opposite operation with it on both sides of the equation. So to undo this, we're going to do the opposite operation on both sides. So we're going to subtract this from both sides. So you see us doing that here. Subtracting initial velocity squared from both sides of the equation. On this side it cancels out, on this side it doesn't, so it stays there. And then we end up with final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared equals, and over here it canceled out, so we're left with two times acceleration times displacement. We're left with just that. And next, what we're gonna need to do is undo multiplying by two and undo multiplying by displacement. And so, to undo multiplication, well, you perform the opposite operation on both sides. So we divide by 2 and divide by displacement, but we have to do that on both sides. Divide by 2 and divide by displacement. Here on this side, 2 divided by 2 cancels out. Delta x divided by delta x cancels out, and they go away. 
and we're left with acceleration all by itself. Hey, we got there. Over here, well, it's not canceling out, and that's okay. It's just a new version of the same equation. We haven't come up with a new equation. That's not the right way to think of this. This is the same equation as that, just in a different form. That's all. It's kind of like turning your backpack inside out. It's still the same backpack. Maybe not as useful, right? You wouldn't want to use this form of the equation if you were trying to solve for the final velocity of an object because its final velocity is buried among all this other stuff. So there are more useful forms, but it's still the same equation. Okay, uh, and then I put a box around it just to, to kind of highlight the, that that's the answer. I have an answer. My job was to solve for acceleration. I've done that. I put a box around my answer to make it stand out. Hey, make my teacher happy. That's really cool. So this is rearranging equations. We're going to do a lot of this. If you have questions, of course, you got to let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.